Good afternoon, Foundation staff. This is Level 4 Researcher Theron Sherman. And today's broadcast is a brief you on a real asshole of an anomaly. <laughs> We're talking about SCP-5950. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-5950-1 and SCP-5950-2 were held within Livestock Containment Enclosure 9 at Site-21 and provided with the standard maintenance required of domesticated livestock. If new SCP-5950 instances are discovered, they are to be contained in even numbers within aquatic transportation units, according to capacity limits. If new SCP-5950 instances are discovered, they are to be contained in even numbers within aquatic transportation units, according to capacity limits. Instances found already in possession of a host will be contained evenly within humanoid transportation units. All recovered instances will then be transported to Parazoology Site-72 for permanent containment, and the current containment procedures will be updated. Description SCP-5950 is a parasitic subspecies of Pacific Flying Squid, genus Totorotus pacificus, capable of fully integrating themselves into human hosts. SCP-5950 instances are approximately 60 centimeters in length and weigh 1.5 kilograms. Instances have a large human-like eye on the upper tip of their mantle, while the lower mantle terminates in eight legs and two frayed tentacles composed of nervous tissue. Without a host, the average lifespan of an SCP-5950 instance is approximately one year, which is analogous to non-anomalous variants. Members of SCP-5950 use organic jet propulsion to enter a human host's rectum, similar to the way non-anomalous Pacific Flying Squid use it for aerial locomotion. After entering a host's anus, the SCP-5950 instance will position itself so its head will remain protruding from the host, functioning as the new visual center. The eight legs fuse to the host's rectum, at which time the SCP-5950 instance will secrete a complex toxin composed of propofol, pentobarbital, theopental, sodium chloride, and water. This toxin puts the host in a semi-comatose paralytic state during the duration of the infestation. The SCP-5950 instance then attaches its two tentacles to the host's spinal cord and assumes full control of the body. Once fully integrated, SCP-5950 instances will consume food and water using the host's mouth, excreting waste from the same orifice. The SCP-5950's host will walk backward in a quadrupedal fashion, with their posterior held in an upwards orientation so that their anal eye is faced in the direction of motion. While possessing a host, an SCP-5950 instance's average lifespan is approximately 20 years, remaining in the same host for the duration of its life. Addendum 5951 Two SCP-5950 instances were acquired by the Foundation in 1945, along with several other anomalies formerly contained by Ijamiya. The recently discovered species was known to Ijamiya as the Shirime Squid, named after the folklore story surrounding the species. Due to the strain of Ijamiya's wartime effort, they only documented basic information on SCP-5950. Out of the three captured instances, only two remained alive, with a third dying of unknown causes. The instructions included with the instances indicated that human hosts would be required within six months to keep them alive. Upon containment, D-00789, a 25-year-old male, and D-00788, a 24-year-old female, were chosen as hosts for the SCP-5950 instances. Once fully integrated into their host, the instances were held within Livestock Containment Enclosure 9 at Site-21. In captivity, SCP-5950 displayed characteristics typically associated with grazing herbivores, consuming approximately 2 kilograms of vegetation daily. The two instances, designated SCP-5950-1 and SCP-5950-2, acted as a mating pair, though no offspring were ever produced. Addendum 5950-2 on September 22, 1965, SCP-5950-2 was found deceased, with SCP-5950-1 curled around it in the fetal position. SCP-5950-1 refused to move away from SCP-5950-2, having to be forcefully removed. Its inner gluteal cleft was covered in a saline solution. An autopsy revealed SCP-5950-2 experienced sudden cardiac arrest leading to death. Following this incident, SCP-5950-1 displayed behavior typically associated with mourning, including lethargy, consistent tear production, and refusal to eat or drink. After approximately two weeks, SCP-5950-1 died due to dehydration and stress-induced cardiomyopathy. Whew! I've been working here for years, and that is at least in the top, uh, 47 of the weirdest things I've seen. Hell, that's the second butthole surfer I've seen in the last two months. 
All right, staff. That ends our broadcast. Use your Foundation Encrypted YouTube account to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell and support our broadcast at patreon.com slash site42.